Today I'm going to talk to you about um, how to extract data from a CSV file using R and doing some outlier tests and actually extracting that data. Now I created this and as I build these tools I want to explain to you how to use them but not necessarily each line by line because I'm, I'm not very proficient with R yet but I'm building tools that might be usable so I want to share them as, as fast as possible. As I learn them I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you more about it though. So here's my Excel file. It's a CSV file. It's, a, it's called read.csv located on my desktop. As you can see, I have a lot of columns um, all the way out to letter V with blah one through 19 or whatnot. All this data is random. I used a random number generator to produce it. What I'm interested in doing though, my, here's my problem that I had to solve today, was I had to take just the A10A data all the way down to the C. See how it changes to C right here? What I wanted to do is I wanted to take all that data now I'm going to take a certain column, which was blah 19 column, and say, are there any outliers? And if there are, can you get rid of them for me? But I didn't want to just do that with the A10A. I wanted to do that with each one separately, A10B, F15CD, and so on and so on. All this data is random, don't forget. I, I changed it to random data. So let's, let's go ahead and look at the R code and see how I did that. Or at least I'll walk you through quickly. I'm going to walk you through, but I'm not going to give you the details. So first I remove um, all the variables. I like to start off with a clean, fresh slate. And I load my data. Now here's something that's crucial is this in this quotes is where your data is located. It must be a CSV file with the syntax that I use and the packages that are loaded. Um, the one thing you want to be careful for when you paste your own in there is make these forward slashes. When you paste it in from Windows, it's going to look like a backslash like that. You want to change them all to a forward slash. Then you can run it. Okay, then uh, I do some stuff, and one thing here is the only one that I've actually implemented so far was the A010A. This is still a manual intervention. I have to still write down each one that I want to extract. Um, and then what I would do is cut and paste this data for each one. Now there's ways to automate that, but I wanted to give you what I have so far. Okay, so here's the function called remove outliers. All it does is it takes in a vector, it looks at all the NAs, all the divide by zeros, it, spits the, it throws them out. And then what it does is it finds the interquartile ranges and it finds the outliers based on some statistics based on the interquartile range. You can read through it and kind of follow it and see. There's basically a range that's 1.5 times the, uh, the first and third quartile. Anyways, that's all stats for you. Okay, so next is extracting the SRT rate, which is not SRT. Uh, that was what it was before I put the random generator in there. This is actually the blah.19 column. So extract just the blah19 column is this code here on 43. And I made it into a new variable. This is the new variable. It's confusing the way I named these because they're subtly different. Like this is A10A and this is A10A underscore SRT. So be careful uh, with that as you go throughout this code. Um, basically, this is how you extract a single column from a data frame. So one column from the entire data frame. If you have 25 columns, you want to extract one. That's the notation and the syntax to do it. Okay. Now you might have done that. You've extracted it, but it's still not a vector. So I convert it to a vector using line 46. I'm sure you can combine these in, into one line, but this was my learning. I had to do this today. Um, and then I wanted to test obvious outliers. So I actually inserted at, at the very end of my data two known outliers like 234 is an outlier and 55 is an outlier. I know this because my random number generator only went from uh, uh, 0 to 5. So I know that these are obvious outliers and if it doesn't get rid of those then you definitely know something's wrong with this code. Okay so when you test yours uh, find out what your data should be around and then throw some sort of outlier in there just to test it. Of course delete these two lines when you're done just to see that it works. Okay, so this just prints it out, what my outliers are. I'm going to run this in a second. I produce a box plot to show the outliers, and then my clean data is equal to, then I call that function removed outliers, and I bring in my vector, and that's what it does. It returns from the vector. It'll return the clean data. And then I do a box plot on the clean data, and then I print out the clean data data. Let's go ahead and run this, and I'm going to show you what it is. So I highlight the whole thing. I click on run. You're going to see a bunch of stuff. You see my box plot. Let's look at the original box plot by clicking left. Okay, so you can't even see the box. These are such big outliers, right? So that looks like the number 55 there, and that's 234 right there. Obvious outliers. Let's get rid of them and look at the box plot, and boom, your box plot goes from zero to five, just as it should, and the bulk of your data is gonna be in these ranges here. Okay, so let's look at the data real quick while we're at it. So the clean data, let's look at the original data first, actually. 
So this is the original data, and you can see the 234 and the 55 are in this data set here, in this vector. And the clean data is down here, and it is gone. So I know it's a lot, and there's a lot of confusion with some of the nomenclatures I've used for these variables, but I wanted to throw this out there. So again, all you have to do is change these, change this to your file name as long as it's a .csv, change this to the column you want to separate out different variables, A10, A15, they're all mixed together. Let's separate them out. And uh, that's about it, and you can obviously change the name of the variables and use this and get rid of the, uh, the data. Hope that helps.